Hey guys, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. <clears throat> I'll give uh, the rest of us a couple more minutes to join. And then we're gonna start in the meantime. Just make sure you have your supplies ready. And I will go through the list of supplies that we'll need in a second as well. But yeah, first I wanna give everyone a couple more minutes to join us. All right, guys, we'll wait one more minute and then we're gonna start. All right, I think we can start and hopefully if someone is missing, they'll join us shortly. Welcome guys. I'm glad you were able to join. If we haven't met before, my name is Vera. I'll be your instructor for today. I apologize for my voice up front. I hope you guys can hear me well. Um, unfortunately, I can't speak any louder. I'm just, you know, getting over being sick. So um, this is all the volume I've got. So I apologize in advance if it's hard to hear me hard to understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> and just again, right away in advance, I want to apologize. I wouldn't be able to respond to the same question over and over again. I guess for the same reasons, just I still find it slightly, well, slightly, not slightly, quite hard to talk. So I'm going to say something once, twice, and then if someone else asks uh, this again, I unfortunately wouldn't be able to continue answering to the same question just to preserve my breath and um, be able to finish this tutorial with voice. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're gonna paint today. We're gonna paint our wonderful couple of bears here, mama bear and a baby bear. And what are we gonna need? I'm gonna be using a canvas. I believe this is um, nine by 12 maybe, let's measure it. What are, what are you canvas? Nine by nine by twelve. Oh yeah, totally. If you traced it first, no problem. Even better. But I will show you how to sketch it. So uh, we're gonna start with a pencil. You're actually gonna need a pencil first, and we're gonna sketch it first. After that, we're gonna move on to painting. And from painting, uh, for our painting part, we're gonna need a, a couple colors acrylic paint. I'm using primary colors only, which is white white, black, yellow, blue, and red. Um, it doesn't really matter which black or uh, white you use or yellow or blue, but for this painting, it matters with red. So the red that you wanna use, you wanna have it more on a pinker side, because as you can see, none of this painting has actual bright red. It has more of shades of purple and shades of pink. So that your, Red needs to have a nice pinker undertone. 
so it shouldn't have like an orangey tone to it. Um, or you can even replace it with using pink, like a hot pink instead. If you have shades of purple, you are welcome to use them. Um, it's going to make your life easier if you do. I'm using only primaries because I want to show you guys how to mix them. So you don't have to buy premix color every single time. So you know that you can do, you can make everything that you need out of just primaries. But if you already have purple, by all means, please use it. It's going to be great. The same with pink. Pink is a great addition here as well. And of course, if you have gold, let's say, or silver, you can use that for stars and for the moon, and it's going to be a good addition as well. Um, we're also going to need a paper towel or a cloth of some kind. And we're going to need water, of course. And we're going to make up a different brushes. For me, I'm going to be using these three brushes today, and I'll explain to you why. And you don't have to have the exact same brushes, but, I mean, you can use any brushes. You can use anything you have at home. But I want, to sh I want to tell you and later show you why specifically this three in this case. So you're going to need a small brush for details because there are a lot of details, even such as outline, the eye, the nose, the ear, all the small things. So you're going to need a nice, good, detailed brush. Ideally, it needs to have a nice pointy end. So you can use just the tip of your brush and get really nice, fine lines. Second brush that you need is something... I would say medium to medium small. In my case, it's this one. And we're gonna need to add a slightly darker outline on the outside for the bears plus to color in the bears and add a bit of shading in blue, light blue, and a bit of shading light pink. So I'm using this one. It's more of an optional brush, but I like it. So something medium small. And this one is a pointy medium round brush. And this one I'm going to use for the background. I find that uh, the pointy, like rounded brushes are better for this um, starry night kind, night kind of technique. But if you don't have that, that's okay. You can use any brush. If only you have a square, square will also work. Just something medium will probably be best. And I would say ideally brush in a bad condition. So for the background, a uh, medium brush in a bad condition with bristles sticking out different directions. It's probably your best brush. So just a couple of brushes. Most important, I would say, probably is just the detailed one and whatever else you have. And that's pretty much it. That's all that we're going to need for today. So let's start with uh, our outline. So I'm going to grab my pencil. And what I usually like to do first is I like to... Um, see where the top is going to be. I don't start just sketching at random. I like to mark it up for myself first. So first I want to identify how tall is my bear going to be. So I would say uh, I'm going to start the highest point is the nose, right? So I would say my nose is going to be somewhere around here. So I'm going to put just a little mark there for myself to know that that's how high the nose is going to go. And then after that, I want to mark where the left side and where the right side is going to be. So the left side, um, I would say somewhere right here. Again, just approximately. And the right side, there's, you see a bit more space on the right. So maybe somewhere right here. So do you see now I know where the top is, where the left is, where the right is. And this is great. So now I can move on to sketching. So from the nose part, just somewhere here, I'm going to have a line. Going down and then curving on this side. And then we're going to go on to the other side.
And we'll add a little nose here. All right, so that's a start for our head. And like later on, we can always edit it if we find that's a too small or too big. We can change that. That's why we start with a pencil. So once we have that, we're gonna move lower and then we're gonna add two bumps. So bump number one, bump number two. And this lately gonna go, so this one is gonna go a little bit, bit further than the head, right? A little further. And the second one is gonna go even further than that. So bump number one. And a bump number two. All right, so now I have this side. Now I'm going to move to this side. And I'm going to do pretty much the same thing. Bump number one, bump number two. So nothing much different. Maybe I'll make a neck a little bit smaller here. All right, so I have all our bumps. Now let's finish up the, we'll add the ear here. And we'll add a second ear. And then the eye. That's done. Now we're going to move to our hands and the tiny baby bear. So let's start with the hands. I'm going to start with this hand first and that, and then I'll position the baby bear. So this one is going to start at the curve that goes in, you see right here. So not right at the line, a little bit further in, so somewhere right here. And then second one, somewhere right here. Here they are. And now let's position our baby bear. So baby bear, his head is going to literally start from the same um, line as the arm. So I'm just going to bring this higher to the nose. So it's going to be a little nose here. Then from there, I'm going to wrap it to the side. I'm going to add a little ears.
And then, of course, the body. And then an eye, and we are done our sketch. Do we have it? You guys can give me a thumbs up in chat to let me know if you have it. If you need a few more minutes, we can wait, that's okay too. And after that, I would say, just actually take a good look at it and see if you're happy with everything. Because once we move on to our painting party, you wouldn't be able to change much. So it's always good to take a good look and see if there's anything you want to change before we move to our painting. We kind of want to make this a little bit smaller. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I like that more. Oh, and another thing too, we forgot one more little thing. Moon, that's right. So. Stacy, good call. You can always add a moon on top later too. It's not a big deal. It's actually a bit of um, an <laughs> inconvenience that we'll have to avoid it, but also because it's so light in color, I prefer to sketch it at first. So yes, I'm with you on this. Let's add a little moon. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, totally up to you. Does anyone else's video keep freezing or is it just Nancy? Because usually it's internet related, but it could be on your end, could be on my end. If it's freezing for everyone, then it's likely on my end. And I can, you know, just try to restart my Wi Fi and see if that helps. Um, if it's just Nancy, then I guess Nancy, it's on your end. So if it's freezing for you guys, let me know. If you can see me clear, let me know. And I'll give you another minute um, to finish sketching before we move on to a painting. You know, guys, I wonder if when you saying you're froze um, was because I just actually was doing nothing for a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I had to like unmute myself and blow my nose because I don't want to do that <laughs> unmuted on camera. But yeah, I, I'm still getting over the sickness. So I may need to do that a few times. So maybe that's what you're referring to as it was freezing. 
<clears throat> because there was no action for a couple of minutes. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a good that's good then. Problem solved. No internet problem. That's a good news. Yeah, I know, right? Too close, too close. I'll do my best not to drink my faint water. All right, we'll wait one more minute and then we're gonna move to our painting. And again, just make sure you have your colors in place. I know, <laughs> this cup is very appropriate for this painting. All right, okay, I think it's time for us to move to our background. Well, to our painting, we're not gonna start with background action. What are we gonna start with is we're gonna start with uh, white and just a little bit of blue for our big bear. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this brush or I'm going to use maybe even two brushes, this one and this one. And I'll tell you why. Let's put my tea on the other side just in case. So I don't dip my brush in, in tea. Um, so I'm going to use medium brush first. I'll dip it in the water and I'll take some white. And I'm going to color this bear in fully with the white. And in my case, I'm not afraid to go over my lines a little bit because as you can see, you can still see them very well. But you do not really lose in them. All right, so I colored in my big bear for you. <laughs> Your sketch look like a mouse, you know what it is? Your ears must be a little bit too big. So just make your ears a little smaller. And then as soon as you have white, I'm gonna move to the smaller brush, this is medium small. You can even use straight small. And I'm gonna make a very light blue. So I'm gonna scoop some white on the side, and just a little bit of blue. This may even be a little too dark, but let's try it. And with this, I'm gonna go on um, edges. So right on the edges, I'm gonna add a bit of that light blue color. but on the inner side of that, of our bear. You see, I added a little bit there. I'm gonna wash my brush 
dab it off on a paper towel and then I'm gonna blend it a little towards the inside with a clean, slightly wet brush. You see it creates like a little light blue line. And that gradually turns into white here. That's why we added white as an underlay, as a blending backdrop here. And here I'm gonna add a bit more. You see around this arm to kind of visually separate that arm a little bit. I might add a touch on the arm itself. Just make sure you're using very, very light blue. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then again, I'm going to wash it off, dab it on a paper towel, and then we'll blend this inner side. And I will add a little bit of right here. And a touch of blue here, blue around the ear as well. That's okay if you're still on white. Go at your own pace. I just can't wait for you guys. And the reason why, because blue you have to add while the white is still wet. If I wait for everyone to add white, then my white is going to be dry. So I'm not going to be able to add my blue. So that's why I'm showing it to you all right away. Because it kind of needs to be done in one chunk. And then whenever you have your white, you can move on to a blue right away. That way, everyone will be able to do blue on the wet. Whenever that may be. All right, so do you see we have now nice little areas that have a bit more blue? And there's a bit of that nice blue shading on our bear. And all that is best to be done on a wet white. And again, I'm going to give you guys a couple more minutes to do this. And then we're going to move to our inner bear. To our baby bear, and we'll do that little guy there.
Yes, yeah, Stacy, pretty much. Pretty much. Add it on the edge, but on the inner side of the edge. So the edge and in. Not the edge and out. And then you blend it with a clean wet brush. So guys, when you've done your paintings, there are actually two places where you can share them. You can share them on the event page created for this event on Facebook. But also we have started a new Facebook group that's specifically for this purpose. Um, and just where we're gonna post more free events coming up on our YouTube channel. So, you know, just so you always stay in touch on what events are gonna be coming up free and you can share your artwork. I'm gonna post that link to that group in chat here. So let me quickly find it for you. So this is the group where you're welcome to use, uh, where you're welcome to post your paintings after you're done. And I'll share the link to an event page later as well. Once we get there, once we get to further being done with this, we still have a lot to go. No problem. Alrighty, guys. Now let's move on to our little guy here. So pretty much the same thing. Now I'm not going to use my medium brush because he's much smaller. So I'm just going to use my medium small. Then I'll take some white. And again, for a starter, so I'll just color him in with white. You don't have to be super careful with white. It's just a blending backdrop. You're not going to see it in the end. Once it dries, it just looks like an empty white can. Be careful there. Just as long as you have some white, it's all good. Because again, we're adding white mostly just as a blending backdrop for our cream. And then after that, I'm going to scoop some white on the side here. I'm going to take a little bit of red and mix them up. Make pink any shade will do. It really is up to you what shade of pink you want. You can have him very light pink, I like a baby pink. You can have more like just nice light like, pastel pinks of any kind. Or you can make it a little darker. And I usually again start um, coloring from the edges. So I add it to the edge, but not as little as I did in blue. I actually usually add a little more here. And you see, it kind of blends was the middle in the white. You can use a small brush for this too if it's easier. i say whichever brush is the easiest. Definitely need small or small. Don't go any bigger than that. So I added some pink there. Now I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it off on a paper towel, with a clean brush, I'm going to blend this a little. The goal is just to have this baby bear a little bit darker, closer to the edges, and then a lighter, closer to the inside. Hi, Vicky. All right, so do you see how it is? It looks darker, closer to the outside. 
it looks lighter closer to the E side. And that's exactly what we want here. And actually with the same light pink color, I'm gonna color in a little bit into the ear and a little blush under the eye. But make sure you use a very nice and light pink for this. So a touch here and a touch right here. And then for our baby bear, I'm gonna make slightly darker, tiny smidge of pink. And you see, I'm gonna add this little blush. It's just like, like a touch darker than the inside, because otherwise it's just gonna blend and you're not gonna see it. it. Shouldn't be very dark either. Just visible, make sure it's visible. And that's pretty much it for our pink. But again, I'll give you this a minute. And then once you have it, we're going to move to our background. And you can let me know in chat when you're ready as well. All right, now let's move to our background. So let's talk about our background for a second. What are we going to do here is we're going to start by using this blue or darker undertone. It's going to be blue and purple first, and then we're going to go around our bear and on top, and we're going to sort of blend it towards the outside. So straight line around our bear, 
and then slightly blend it towards the outside and uh, color in the top and blend it towards the bottom. And then we're gonna do with like a darker blue purple. And after that, with a slightly lighter, more warm purple, we're gonna color in the rest. And of course, blend them. And then we're gonna move on to lighter purples of pinkish colors, and we'll overlap them from the edges to create that beautiful variation of colors and galaxy look. And then we're gonna take some yellow, we'll add a moon, and we'll add a little bit of stars. Then after that, after our background is done, we're gonna go back to our pairs, and then we're gonna add a bit more of that blue outline. So we see more linear now. We'll also add a bit of black on the eyes and noses. And we'll finish up with a tiny little glare in white on our noses. So for right now, I'm gonna start by mixing my color. Um, I'm gonna use my medium small brush here. So I'm gonna start with blue this time. Let's put some blue on the side here. Then I'm gonna add, say about the same amount of red, maybe even a little bit more than blue. We'll mix them up. And you see it turns into a very, very, very dark color. So this is a little too dark for me. So that's why, and there's no black in there, as you saw, this is just blue and red. I'm gonna add some white, not a lot. I'm not trying to make it super light. I'm just trying to make it visibly color. So it just doesn't look like straight black because right now it's very dark and it just looks almost black, right? So that's why I'm adding some white to it, not a lot. So. Let me show you. It's pretty much what it looks like. It looks like a dark purpley blue. So with this color, you can continue perfecting it and bring it. Um, to any color that you want. But for me, I think this is just perfect color action. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be going around my bear. So first I start with this brush and you go right to your outline. You can overlap your outline a little bit, but be precise with this line. At least as precise as you can when it touches to the bear. You see, I added a bit of that outline. Now, I'm not even gonna wash this brush. I'm just gonna take my medium brush and a little bit of paint on my medium brush as well. And what I'm gonna do is from here out, I'm gonna start dry brush spreading it. So do you see with almost next to no paint on the brush, I just want to spread it a little bit, like in a messy way almost. This is great. So once you spread it a little bit there, you can go back to your medium small brush and continue doing the outline.
So again, as soon as you have that, <coughs> so it does, we're gonna grab our medium brush and you can take a little bit of paint on it. And we'll start spreading this. You see, this is like a dry brushing technique pretty much because I'm not using water at all. I'm just using a very, very small touch of paint. Continuously refilling, just a little touch of paint. Then I want to go over my moon. So again, with the same brush, with a medium small, or even just regular small, because it's such a small detail, right? So whatever brush is comfortable, I would say. And I'm gonna wash off my medium small brush. And the rest I'll finish up with a medium brush. And I'm just gonna go from the top with my medium brush. And I'm gonna color in the stick top fully. And then I'm gonna lightly spread it down. And you can do your edges as you go if you want to. Whenever you're adding paint that touches the edge of the canvas, with the same color, you can just color in the edge. So you don't have to keep up with me on the speed here. I'm going to show you all this because all this is one step. And you can take your time on doing it. It's all part of the same step. Notice when I spread it, I usually do um, like a rounded, you see I do it in a rounded motion. But it's a personal preference, it doesn't have to be like that. You can just literally dab it or rub it. But however, I like doing a more like a rounded motion rubbing. And also guys, after this video, after this event is done, the video from this event is gonna stay right here on our YouTube page. So. You can always come back to it and re-watch it, and it will actually give you an ability to pause the video. And you know, we know a lot of people prefer that option because you can just take your time on every step. Um, and even as we are live, you can actually rewind it and re-watch certain sections. Even though you can't pause it just yet, it doesn't give you that option, but there is an option to rewind and re-watch. Um, everything that already has happened because it's it's filming it as it as we go right. So you're welcome to take advantage of that option too.
All right, that's pretty much all that I needed to do with this color. Now I'm going to do. I'm going to give you guys more time to do this, and I'll actually work on the edges for this little guy here. All right, I'll give you guys a couple more minutes for this. Yeah, it is totally possible to give us some watercolor. Absolutely. This is very watercolor friendly um, painting. The only thing you will likely have to do background in this slightly different technique. But yeah, you, you don't need to, you know, rub it because watercolor is more watery. Let's say if you're doing this in watercolor, um, just wet the entire area and then do blue from the I mean, the entire area of the background, not the bears. And then do this dark color from the inside, how we did here. And from the top, you just don't have to rub it like we did here because it's going to be all wet, so it's going to spread naturally. And then add purples. And also watercolor, you don't work like acrylic. Sometimes you work from dark to light. So, for example, we can dark, we will be darkening up the entire background here, right? And then 
we're going to be adding a lighter shade on top. With the watercolor, it's the other way around. So basically, um, what you're going to do is you're going to preserve light areas for the light shades. So light shades go first, and then you darken it up. So don't darken up this entire sections. Just add them as light as needed. And you use the darkness from here to blend in there. So exclude this next step. The step that we're going to do now, where we add dark purple, you're going to exclude that completely. You're just going to start adding light purples, and you're not going to layer it. You're more like do it all in one shot. But yeah, absolutely, this is paint and it's very compatible with watercolor. Um, no, there is no tracing, but guys, this is a super simple sketch. Just give it a shot. It's going to work out just fine, trust me. It's super, super simple. So if you just rewind to the beginning of this tutorial, you can see how we sketched it. If you're just joining us now. All right, guys, I'm going to move to the back because mine is actually like super dry at this point. So um, I'm going to make more purpley purple, actually. So I'm gonna use this color as a base if you have it. If not, you can mix a whole new one. It's the same ingredients, red, blue, and white. This time, we're just gonna use way more red, not a lot of blue, and a little bit more white. So for me, I will use that as my blue, and I'm just gonna add a bit more red to it and a bit more white. And I'll make still, I would say, pretty dark purple overall. But you see now it's visibly purple. This was blue that we just used. This is the purple. So I'm going to color in fully this remaining section here. And I'll do the edges too. But why not, right? And then with the same rubbing technique, I'm going to spread it onto my existing colors. And you see, I'm just dry brushing it on. So where there's empty canvas, you kind of use a bit more paint to cover it solid, right? So your canvas doesn't really come through in pieces. And then as you go further, you just dry brush it over the other colors lightly. So you have a nice transition, so it overlaps, right? It creates a nice transition. That's my one side, and let's move to your other side. In my case, I'm going to need to make more paint again because I'm out, but that's easy.
You see again, I'm starting by covering pretty solid everything that's just white canvas. And then once that's covered, I'm gonna dry brush it out to overlap my family. This is not blended, this is blended, the big difference, right? I'm just gonna blend from the inside, from the existing color I just added out towards the background. You can just dry brush in the same circular rubbing motion. Um, Vicky, it, to answer your question, you're saying your around, color around there turned the brown. Um, I would say, I mean, wondering if you should redo it and like let it dry or paint it white and start over, start over. It depends. Do you have a different pigment paint? If yes, then yes. If no, then leave it because it's brown, likely not because you mixed it wrong, but likely because your paint um, has yellow pre-mixed into it. That's the reason why, so do you remember at the beginning of this video, I said it's important, <coughs> sorry guys, it's important that your red has a pinker undertone versus the orange undertone. If your red has an orangey undertone to it, unfortunately, no matter how good you are at mixing, your color will have this brown undertone to it. In the end, uh, your purple will have this brown undertone. It's because one of more and more of the colors, and it's usually red in this case, so red, will have yellow pre-mixed into it. So, um, yeah, your blue could an, be an issue too, potentially, but most of the time it's the red that's an issue. So if you have a different pigment, so let's say you have a different a red to replace, to use instead, absolutely just mix in your color, let it dry and go right over it and do it again. If you don't have different color, I don't think there is a point if you're doing it because you will end up with the same result.
Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think that's your mixing skills. It's very common. Like um, this happened to me too before. Um, it really is not a mixing problem. If it turns into a brownish tone, that just means one of your pigments has a yellow pre-mixed into it. So unfortunately, it's more of a pigment problem than a mixing problem. Unless you accidentally smudge some yellow into it. Yeah, in which case, it could mean a mixing problem. But yeah. Kathy, you can post pics on YouTube. I don't think so. But there is a link. Actually, I still might have it. Oh, if you don't, please post it here. Here you go. There is a link where you can post it. Um, it's a Facebook group. All right, guys, let's move to next step. So here, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make lighter shades of pink or purples on the same spot. And it's pretty much the same components, just this time you use more white. So I'm going to add a bit more work here. A bit more white. You see it almost like pink R. And with this, I'm going to start a rubbing a little bit. So this time you just dry brush. You only use a little bit of paint. You don't use too much. Just take a little bit of paint and dry brush it. And then even lighter color. And lighter it just means you add a little bit more white to the same paint. And again, just dry brush it to create those different shades there. If you guys doing your edges, you can bring this onto your edge as well. You just don't just look there.
then after that, whenever that may be, can move to our sky and our moon. So basically I'm gonna take my small brush here and I'll mix a little bit of yellow with a little bit of white. I make yellow and white mixture. And with this color, I'm gonna color in my moon first. Then I'm going to splatter my stars, but ideally what you want to do is you want to cover your bear. So if some of them get on a bear, it's not a big deal, but what I like to do, I like to place my paper towel over my bear so it doesn't get in there. And then I'm going to grab some bigger brush. So for me, it's a medium brush. This is the biggest brush that I'm using today. And I'm going to water down this yellow and white mixture. And then with a watered down mixture of yellow and white, I'm gonna do this. And you want most of them to be concentrated in this upper area. If a few of them go down, that's okay. But we're not gonna intentionally do this entire thing. And good insight. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Must be the red. And ta -da. Here's our starry sky. Thanks, Sherry. Alrighty. Um, so, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add this blue outline. 
I'm going to grab my small brush. I grab a little bit of white paint, a little bit of blue, mix them up into more of, I would say, medium blue. I'm going to water it down a little bit because it's much easier to work with paint when it's more liquid versus very thick paint. And I'm just going to add a little flick of an outline everywhere where it needs to be. So I'm not doing literally outline everywhere. I'm doing it in some places and I'm just doing like a little flick. It's just the very tip of your brush. And you see, I'm just highlighting certain areas on the bigger bear. And then I'll add a full on outline on a smaller bear. Awesome. By the way, if you guys did it in watercolor, there is another group where you can share it. It's a group dedicated specifically to watercolor. It's called Watercolor Lovers by Artist Paula Durham Region. So let me send you a link to that too. Okay, so this one is for watercolor. If you did it in watercolor, please post it there. We would love to see how it turned out. Um, yeah. If you posted it in acrylic, then the other link, the one that I sent earlier, because that group is for all mediums, and this group is particularly for watercolor. All right, so... You see, I have the outline everywhere. Um, on the small bear, it's a little more solid. On the big bear, it's a little more loose and more like flick here and there. And then I'm gonna take my block. And I'm only gonna use a tiny, tiny touch of block. Add a line, and we're gonna add a nose. Both our bears. And then as a final touch, we're gonna add a smidge of white to that little nose. I'm just gonna take a little bit of white, and a tiny flick. the nose and that is it guys after that it is officially finished it is a beautiful beautiful painting um again feel free to post it either in watercolor group or in um just group or medium group i'm gonna also put links again so i'm gonna mark them this time watercolor group If you did it in watercolor, and um, if you did it in acrylic, then, or any other medium. Feel free to post it right here. 
You're very welcome. Yeah, we would love to see how they turn out. If you guys first time painting with us, feel free to subscribe. We do those at least once a week. And we have a variety of mediums as well. So there is always something new and interesting. And you can always also see uh, what's coming up. If you just go to the main page on our YouTube here, on our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see what is coming up in the next month and what day and what time. And also we already have so many pre-recorded video tutorials. If anyone is interested. And you guys had fun and you want to say by thank you by tipping me. You don't have to, but if you want to, I would never say no to that. You can do that as well. Um, I will post my PayPal link. Um, you can do it through PayPal. Um, yeah, I will post it in chat. Yeah, I posted my tip in for anyone who is interested, and thank you in advance. What is it, guys? Do you have any questions? If you do, ask away. Oh, nice. Yes, this is a very nursery-friendly painting. I agree with that. Awesome. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. All right. If no one has questions, um, then I'm going to let you all finish on PC. If you do come up with questions, again, you can ask them depending on the medium that you worked in. If you worked in watercolor, in a watercolor group. If you worked in acrylic, you're welcome to post in an all medium group. And we'll try to answer all your questions as they come. So thank you guys all for joining me. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, the rest of your Sunday. Bye, everyone.